We're in section two of the June 2007 test, and I'm going to do question number eight. It says, proponents of the electric car maintain that when the technical problems associated with its battery design are solved, such cars will be widely used and, because they are emission free, will result in an abatement of the environmental degradation caused by auto emissions. That's a long sentence, hard to follow, maybe a little bit. Proponents of the electric car maintain. That word maintain is a little bit loaded. It kind of means claim. And when you say people claim, you usually are going to then turn around to disagree with that statement. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that the speaker might be a little skeptical about the proponents of electric cars. Um, so if we solve these battery problems, the cars are going to be widely used. And then because they're emission free, there's going to be an abatement of the environmental degradation caused by auto emissions according to these proponents. Okay, but, there it is, but unless we dam more rivers, the electricity to charge these batteries will come from nuclear or coal-fired power plants. Each of these three power so sources, that's damming rivers, nuclear, or coal, produces considerable environmental damage, thus the electric car blank. Uh, this kind of question, you know, you could call it a complete the argument question, but I'm not going to call it a complete the argument question. What am I going to call it? I'm going to call it a must be true question. Because for sure it's a variety of a must be true question. It's that type of question. They're not asking you to fill in the blank on what the, the speaker would say next or what you would like to hear them say next. That's just not what they're really asking you. They're asking you, did you understand what the speaker has said so far? And can you pick an answer that will conservatively fill in the blank without going further than what the uh, speaker has already said? Okay? It's a lot more like reading comprehension. It's a must be true question. So I'm going to be wary here of bold, aggressive answers. I'm going to prefer weakly stated, conservative, boring, obvious answers. So um, proponents say we're going to like, you know, eliminate, it's an abatement of environmental degradation caused by auto emissions once we get the electric car. This speaker says, but hey, you got to get the power from somewhere. And when you get the power from dams or nuclear or coal, the, all three of those have their own environmental damage. So, blank. A, the electric car will have worse environmental consequences than its proponents may believe. There's one thing about that answer that I totally love. For this type of question, there's one thing about that answer that I totally love. Anybody want to tell me what it is? It's one word, really. May. may. I love that it's. I love that it has a maybe in there, because that makes it conservative and safe and boring and obvious. It's hard for that to be false. They said already that environmental. The the proponents of the electric car think that this is going to be an abatement of environmental degradation as soon as we have the electric car. Abatement, I guess, means elimination. And then. The speaker provides evidence that seems to suggest that, hey, the power's got to come from somewhere, so there is going to be some environmental damage. So if the proponents of the electric car believe that the environmental degrada degradation is going to be abated, but the speaker has provided evidence that it's not going to be abated, then I guess the electric car is going to have worse environmental consequences than its proponents may believe. And I love the softness, again, of May. I'll be surprised, actually, if that turns out not to be the right answer. B says, the electric car will probably remain less popular than other types of cars. And that's just such a horrible answer for this type of question. This is an evidence-based, must-be-true question. And we, the popularity of the cars was never even discussed. How can that be forced to be true by what the argument said? C. The electric car requires that purely technical problems be solved before it can succeed. What is a purely technical problem? Was that ever even mentioned? Is that what this is about? I don't think so. D, the electric car will increase the total level of emissions rather than reduce it. I think if you missed this question, that's probably what you picked. The problem with D is that the speaker didn't, just didn't go that far. 
the speaker said, hey, you got to get that electricity from somewhere. But that doesn't mean that this is going to be worse than gas. Do you get that? I think the most common way that people miss these fill in the blank questions, these complete the argument questions, the most common way that they miss it is by just taking the next step. And the design of the question sure looks like they want you to take the next step. But that's never what the LSAT is about. They, they are testing whether you read it and understood it and then can answer the question safely and conservatively on this type of question, which I think is simply just a must be true question. That's it. E says, uh, the electric car will not produce a net reduction in environmental degradation. And again, that goes further, that, that just goes too far. In fact, if you picked D, I don't know how you didn't pick E. Or if you picked E, I don't know how you didn't pick D. It's like they're so similar, D and E, and they both are similarly wrong in that they just go a step further than what the facts really justified. A is the safest, boring, most conservative answer, so A is the answer for this must be true question.